Coming peace from the heart with Father Antonio Agnes. Today is Saturday of the 19th week of ordinary time. First reading Joshua chapter 24 verses 14 to 29. Gospel reading Matthew chapter 19 verses 13 to 15. Friends, usually Saturdays, as you know, in our Catholic liturgy, in our Catholic tradition, uh, is dedicated to Mother Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mother of God. Um, just a little background. Why do we dedicate Saturday to Mary? And why are Saturdays uh, known as days for the Virgin Mother? This is the reason. In the Catholic liturgical tradition, um, usually whoever, whatever was used as an instrument um, for a great occasion is celebrated a day after that occasion. Um, so, um, because Friday was the day Jesus died for us, as you know, Good Friday, the day that changed the world, the single day, they that changed the the destiny of the whole world and jesus died on that day and the day following saturday we celebrate the woman through whom this was made possible when she said yes she gave a fiat and fiat means her let it be her amen and she gave her fiat her amen to god and that it should be done and by that god as we hear from the scriptures it took seed the Holy Spirit took seed in her, in her womb and Jesus was conceived. And so that's the little liturgical reason why Saturdays are given to Our Lady. Uh, because five days are for her son Jesus, the day our redemption uh, was wrought. And so the next day, the instrument through which, through which uh, this salvation has come to us, she given the womb for, for, this, for this God who can save us. She is celebrated the next day, which is Saturday. Okay. Um, today's reading from Joshua actually is our last time she read from this book. We have come to the end of Joshua. And uh, indeed, we also hear we have come to the end of the life of Joshua. Today we are told that Joshua died at the age of 110 years. A bit 10 years minus that of uh, Moses, uh, who was before him, his, his father and teacher. Obviously, they are not related, but we can say in some way, to show that Moses was higher, uh, is a man, no? Joshua he just come after after Moses. But friend, Joshua has his own story. Although he grew up in the shadows of Moses, uh, God had a plan for him. And when his time came, he took over. So sometimes you have to be patient with God, you know. Uh, when you are in a place and you feel that the time has come for you to be in charge, to be promoted, and the situations around the, the are not allowing you, the conditions around the people are not allowing, allowing you, don't be worried. Uh, don't be worried. Uh, just take it easy. See, have patience. At God's own time, He makes everything beautiful. He will do the right thing for you. Okay, so Joshua comes out from the shadows of Moses, becomes the leader himself, as we see, and he leads the people for many, many years. Now they are in the promised land, as we heard from yesterday. And so today's reading um, was a decisive point, a decisive moment that he wants them to choose which God is their God, you know. And we have the famous, one of the famous Bible verses in history, you know, very common, you know. It says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Uh, but as for me and my family, we shall serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Very impressive. Very impressive. And um, how many leaders could say this? And this world today, today we lack leaders like that who can stand out, you know. Leaders who can stand out boldly and say, look, I choose this right way. I stand for this, you know. I am my family. I am my people. I am my country. You know, we stand for this. We lack such leaders uh, because these leaders are afraid, uh, afraid of attacks. What people say uh, when they say no to this or they say yes to that. But Joshua uh, was a bold leader. He said, look, you can do whatever you want, but as for me and my family, we will save the Lord. Beautiful. I pray that you can say the same thing about your own family if you are listening to me. Married, husband, wife, 
um, in a leadership position, you can say, I, for me, for me and my family, for me and my workers, for me and my subordinates, for me and my co-workers, for me and my friends, for me, and you see, the list goes on and then you will serve the Lord. And it's important that if you have this opportunity to lead others, you make the, you do that for them to know. But friends, there are people who only make decision when the leader has made a decision. They, 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 they always count on the leader's position. So choose rightly. Yeah, choose rightly. So when Joshua had chosen rightly that he and his family will serve the Lord, he threw it open to them. They couldn't say otherwise. They said, we too, yeah, we too we will serve the Lord. Because their leader, their master, has shown the way. So they say, we also, we will serve the Lord. Okay. We pray for leaders, especially those who have to make decisions and decisions now affect others, even generations after them, that will be bold to make the right decisions, especially decisions that will stand by the Lord. That they and those who come after them will have the opportunity to serve the Lord. So we pray for all leaders, all families, because all, all, all families, you have leaders in families, even in the church, our own church, you pray for the leaders in the church. And to be bold to say, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Okay. But then Joshua made it clear, you know, he, he makes it so clear. Because when they say, we also will serve the Lord, say, you wait. <laughs> this God that you want to serve, are you sure you can serve him? So Joshua kind of uh, wants them to re-examine what they are saying. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a lip service he wants to tell them, you know. Because there are people who always join the crowd, you know. They call it the crap, whatever, you know. The mob, mob, mob decision, mob way. You know, people who are who jump and follow the crowd. Everybody's saying, so I'm going with them. They say, no, don't follow the crowd. Think carefully. Because this God that you are saying, you also serve because I've said that. He's jealous. Which means he will not allow you to have him and have other people. And serve him and serve other people. Serve him today and that serve another God tomorrow. <laughs> but friends, what we see around this day, spiritual life. See, this is important for our spiritual lives. Don't let us, he says, don't joke with this. When you say you are a Christian, when you say you are a Catholic, it's not a lip service. Today we have Christians who are Christians only on Sundays. Uh, between the weekdays, they have other places they go to consult some spiritualists, you know, some other powers. And then they come back Sunday. You are fooling yourself. The word is fooling yourself. In the end, you will suffer. You can't serve God that way. He's a jealous God. You can't serve him and add other people to it. Um, okay, this is just to, to add up. No. <laughs> Our God is so jealous that he doesn't want you to be topping up when he is there for you. He wants just him and him alone. And the same thing that applies to us Catholics, you know. Some people are Catholics only on Sunday, Monday to Friday, Saturday, other churches, other pastors, you know. We don't do that. <laughs> the spiritual life. In the world, you know, okay, the world will say be dynamic, you know. When you are going for an interview, you don't want someone who is dynamic, who can flow with the current. But my dear sister, my dear brother, in the spiritual life, that worldly understanding doesn't apply. You can't be a Catholic and be going around being dynamic, testing other churches. You know, in the, in the spiritual life, don't taste other, other things. You take one and you stand by it. You know, those who are in the health sector will tell you, you keep changing doctors, you will never have your, your situation solved. But today, this doctor, when that doctor, when that, what, what are you going to do for yourself? When in the end, you are just making your situation worse. Stay with one person, and those who are married will tell you, faithfulness, the word is faithfulness here, you know. You are married and then it's okay, I want to have other women or other men besides. What are you doing to yourself? So you see, when we are trying as Catholics to, and we want to add other things to it, because all oh, people are, everybody saying this, people are saying you want to follow the crowd. You don't know what you are doing. I am Catholic, point, punto, sorry, I'm, I'm little Italian is coming, but I'm Catholic, period. Stick to it. Because if you think that the God who is you serve, the Catholic Church, the same God in that church, then why are you going around for him? For him? He is there. If he's in the church, stay there and serve him there. Be faithful to him in your church. You know? So this is also, for us, you know, we have for the followers, there's also a part for us. Don't go around tasting churches, tasting pastors, uh, because you want better life. It doesn't apply in our spiritual life. That is for the world. In the spirit, it doesn't work that way. When you are faithful to whatever you commit yourself to, 
the results begin to show. Okay? Alright, so, friends, this is the message of Joshua for us. It's difficult, it's hard, because that's the way it sounded to the Israelites, actually. And that's why they came back to say, okay, we, we, okay, we understand, we, we can do that, you know. They say we can do that. It's okay, if you say you can, you are your witnesses. If you read it, say you are your witnesses. Because I tell you, it's not difficult, it's not easy. Anyway, we know now that the people could not be faithful. Of course, we, we, we know now because we know the story of the Israelites. After some years, they went back picking other gods. And that has been the story of humanity since then. And so uh, that's why we are not surprised that some people, being now Christians, being now Catholics, will be going around tasting other churches, tasting other pastors. That has been the story of humanity. But that is not the correct story. Faithfulness to God in one church, in one faith, is the way to go. You know, okay. So we pray that you have the grace. Is the grace, no friends? The word is grace. Because sometimes we are tempted, even as leaders ourselves, to also look outside for some help. But we know faithfulness doesn't mean adding that people. It means staying put to one person, to one aim, to one desire. The gospel reading is something that is quite known to us. Little children have been brought to Jesus, you know, and the disciples. <laughs> very typical of. You see, when you give somebody some powers, you just imagine you are a boss, give somebody some powers. And they want to flex their power, we say in you know, our own language, you know. And so they want to, things you are not asking them to do, they add to it, you know. You said, okay, this and that, but they will add to it. So that's what the disciples were doing. Of course, they were protecting Jesus, guiding him, and they feel good. People are coming to him, you know, many people are coming. So people are coming to see Jesus, they feel that, you know, that, that kind of sense of feeling high, good, you know, is in all of us. And so the things he had not said, let them, they started stopping the children from coming. <laughs> but Jesus had not said that. But Jesus was looking. So he said, please, allow the children to come. So again, we pray for those who are made, they put in charge of, uh, as leaders. Always have the second, a little eye open to those around you, you know. Because sometimes those who put in charge, they are doing a good work. It's a good intention, actually. But they may, might be putting, pushing people away from you, in general, people away from you. Preventing people who need you not to come to you, especially those who, are, who have to work with the poor, please. And that's why Pope Francis tells us, the church, that we should come out from our sacristies and our parishes, our, our rectories, you know, as priests, once in a while, to go down there and see what's happening. Because some little children, not children as in children, but because anybody who needs God as a child, some little children want to come to God, to come to us, come to the church, actually. But these disciples that we have sometimes preventing them from coming to the church and let us go out and see for ourselves so we can so quickly allow, allow them to come because this for this belongs the kingdom of heaven we pray for all those who feel like being children because that's their spirit when you feel like a child as a christian it means that you can trust god fully fully and completely so we pray for a childlike spirit to trust god as if he's the only one we know. Actually, he's the only one we know. But that is the spirit which we live and work as Christians. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for guiding us always with your words. We pray. And the Lord, as we also make our own little journeys as children towards you, help us to trust you fully. Especially, Father, when difficulties come and we feel like going to other people, other fathers, other places for the answers. It's human for us, Lord, the temptation to look outside. Let us know that you are enough for us. If only we commit ourselves to you fully and faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise be Jesus Christ.